Welcome to API and its Applications in Business Central. Alistair Ramono from Cloud Friends, I'll let you take it away. All right. Um, let me know once you're able to view the screen. I can, yep. And if you just want to go in yep. from the video, well, beautiful. Take it away. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, I'm Alistair and I work at CloudFriends as a business central techno-functional consultant. And today I'll be going to present on with uh, APIs and its applications in business central. So basically there are a few objectives uh, that we can, we can take out uh, as our learning objectives. Uh, first one is to understand APIs. Uh, second is to filter. APIs and get the detail, uh, data results as we want. Um, create custom APIs. Uh, then we have indented entities. Uh, then we are going to, you know, use a JSON data type in Business Central. And then finally, we have Azure functions for complex integrations. So, uh, what is today's agenda? Is basically I'm going to divide this webinar into four parts. Uh, first one is using the standard. Uh, APIs or understanding what is present. Uh, we'll create our custom APIs. We'll uh, use JSON data types to do our integration. And finally, uh, we'll wrap it up with just, uh, Azure functions to take up with the complex integrations and how we can integrate it with Business Central as well. All right, so in standard APIs, basically there are a couple of things to be considered first is list of companies so here you can select multiple companies uh, if you know business central supports multiple uh, legal entities so based upon each company you can filter out your data and get the data as you require uh, then we are going to check out the list of uh, out of box entities which are present and then we are going to see some of the filtering criteria and how we can use it uh, in our applications to build out more robust and easy forming uh, APIs, I would say. So this is the list of companies. So I have given the URL. You can simply replace the tenant ID with whatever tenant ID you have. And uh, another version of API has come up, which is v2.0, but I have majorly kept it uh, v1.0 here. Okay, so these are the list of companies which you can see and you can, uh, use it to filter out the data that you want. Uh, going to the next slide, uh, here you can see the list of by default or the standard APIs uh, which are present in Business Central uh, as out of box. So total there are around 52 APIs in V1.0 and I think they have increased some of them uh, in V2.0 as well. Then we have is basically, uh, you know, getting the records. So if you notice the URL, uh, what I have done is I'll be calling with the company ID and uh, forward slash with the entity name. In this case, the entity is customer and I can get all the data uh, from the API. The restriction to this is around 20,000 records, uh, which is the pagination uh, offered by Business Central. Uh, you cannot change it although it is changeable in Business Central on-premise and NAV as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. Then it comes to filtering the data. So you can filter the data uh, right within the URL itself. So the criteria is you will have to use the following format, which is a uh, question mark dollar filter equal to the filter field on the basis of which uh, you're going to filter. Uh, this uh, person 20 is basically space and the operator is equal to greater than equal to uh, less than equal to less than greater than uh, not equal to. So you can simply select here and then you can give it with the value. So if it's a text based field or a code based field, you can simply give a single quote uh, also represented as person 27 here. Uh, and if you can take a look in the URL as how I'm calling it. So here I'm going to filter uh, the customers on the basis of the number field. Uh, and I'll just uh, filter a customer which, which will have a number uh, C10067. And if you see, I, I have highlighted over here. Similarly, we can also filter integer and uh, daytime variables uh, as well. Just that the, there's a little bit 
difference in the format. If you notice that the percent 27 is gone, which means for integers, date times date, uh, you can directly put in the values and you will get the corresponding results. Now we are uh, going to see how to create our own APIs. So not uh, everything is present in APIs by default. So if you want, you can create your own. Uh, the majorly it is divided is basically create, creation of tables, creation of API pages. Then we'll uh, put in some part just in between to get more details uh, as to how to uh, grab the data from the part pages. And then we'll create complex OData uh, entity data models. So this is with regards to creation of the table. So if you know, uh, by default APIs need a GUID field, uh, which will be the main field or the primary key used by APIs to recognize itself. So once you create that field in your table, okay, or if it is present in your table uh, for existing APIs, you can go and check the on insert trigger. So there, uh, the code written is to automatically populate with the value uh, once you create a new record. Okay, so I have just mentioned it over here. Uh, it is indicated by the line rec.id equals to create GUID. So the cre create GUID creates a unique GUID and assigns it to the ID field that we have created. Then while creating our API page, so there is a by default template present in uh, Visual Studio Code, you can use it. So majorly the one which is, is our API publisher, our API group, the version, the entity name, the entity set name, and the source filter. And uh, you'll also need to define the field that is a GUID field, which we have created in the table uh, as our OData key field. So basis on the basis of that, uh, it will be acting as a key on that API. So I've created this page type and when I run it, uh, I, I can see it. So if you notice in the URL, uh, you will see after sandbox slash API, there is all the CF, beta uh, companies, and then the entity name. So in this case, all is a name uh, or, and the CF is a group name. So there's a standard format, which is to be followed uh, on basis of which you can decide how your URL will change, okay? So this is the basic API, uh, how you can create it. Now coming to uh, adding more part pages. So in this case, for example, if you're taking a, a look at sales invoice or sales order, uh, you can see that there's a header and then there's a, a line page, okay, which is a part page. Uh, it is not mandatory that uh, it will come up automatically. So what you need to do is I'm creating a part page, which is of the type API. Okay, so in this uh, part page, I'll be calling it with the name uh, customer financial, uh, customer financial details too. Okay, uh, I have created an ID uh, in the backend for it. So I can assign it and I will simply put this part page as a part of my customer. So this is my customer API that I have created. I'll put it as a part page. Now, while I'm calling my API, I cannot see it here but you can manipulate it to get the data as you want. So for example, if I'm uh, going one step ahead, in this case, I'm going to select my customer or the customer uh, GUID, okay? On the basis of customer GUID, I can further uh, get into my part page. So the format is basically the publisher, the group, uh, the version, the company, so the company and its number is basically used for selecting our API or calling the records of an entity. And in order to select a customer, I have selected using this ID uh, in the parenthesis. And after that, I have appended with the uh, part page ID. So using that, I can now see that I can generate results uh, for that specific part page. So for example, if you want to upload data for sales orders uh, and sales lines, you can simply create a sales order using API and then use the sales order ID in uh, the following format. And then you can put in a uh, sales order lines and then you can uh, simply run a post method with this, the URL and it should create your multiple sales lines. Okay. 
Uh, moving on to complex types. So for example, uh, you might have a requirement where you want a JSON data to be indented into JSON data. So that can also be built. So in this case, uh, what I have done is I'll be creating a field which will have all the uh, in between JSON data and I can simply show it. So it is used uh, in Business Central using something called as entity data model. So entity data model is basically used to format the data as you like, uh, especially when it comes to indentations. Okay, so in this case, I have created a simple field uh, web, web address uh, and I'm using it as my entity data model. So if you can see the OData EDM type, it has web address. Okay, so I'll go further and I'll show you how it matters. So whenever I fetch a record, uh, I need to actually set the data uh, into my entity data model. So that can be done uh, with the help of, of JSON objects. So in JSON objects, you can simply, you know, uh, gather the data form into a JSON, uh, you know, in a JSON format, and then you can display it as a part of your fields. Okay. Uh, and similarly, while you're passing your JSON data, you can actually read it and you can put it into Business Central uh, directly. Okay, so these are the two functions, calculated cost web and process web address. So calculated cost web is going to basically uh, get the data from the email and the web page of the customer and uh, put it as a, you know, indented JSON. And if, if you are doing a post call to the API, uh, the process web address is going to take care of uh, getting the tokens and everything and then passing it on uh, to the values in the record. Okay. So there is one more thing. So if you notice, I have also mentioned that there was an OData EDM type and I have uh, renamed it as web address. So what it means is uh, you can simply create this co uh, complex type as an uh, EDM definition. So in this, you are going to mention what is the length of it, uh, what is the data type of it, if null is acceptable or not. Now the catch with this is it's uh, only supported in Business Central on-premise, okay? And uh, I am not sure if it is supported in NAV 2018, but I would definitely try and give an update on that as well. But this is what I got in Business Central on-premise. Uh, and if I'm trying to do the same thing in my Business Central online, it gives me an error because it's not supported by default. Uh, we have a thread on Yammer going on for this as well. Uh, the major catch is why, does, uh, why Microsoft does not support us uh, because the CDS integrations uh, do not support complex data types uh, for entity uh, data modeling. So that's why Microsoft has disabled it, but we can go, we can see it further, uh, I hope. So the output of this is basically uh, when I'm calling my customers, okay, if you notice that there's a web address, uh, like a you know small, uh, small version of a JSON uh, indented into a JSON, okay? So I have created a custom EDM using JSON object and I'm putting the data into it. So that is basically our EDM and how it should look. Then moving on to the part where you need to create custom APIs, but uh, you want to customize existing APIs. Now the catch with that is Microsoft does not support modifying any APIs, but uh, there's a small workaround, which is you can copy the existing uh, APIs from the base application and you can do your modifications as you like. So for example, in this case, I, am, I have created an extension and I'm going to simply put in this two fields, which is API type and API ID. And uh, in, my, in my respective uh, pages, that is the ones which I've copied from the source code, uh, I can make Add additions to it and I can simply add it. So I have highlighted in the red box. Uh, I just have to change the API publisher beta, uh, sorry, publisher group versions uh, so that it looks like a different API. But on the back end, if you go and see the source code, it's the same. So you can say that you are actually customizing um, existing APIs. Okay. So in this case, I was able to add this. Uh, two fields here. In this case, here it is API type and API ID. Okay, so I've highlighted it. 
Um, so this was basically with regards to APIs, how you can uh, filter APIs and how you can connect with them. And uh, when it comes to building complex APIs, you can also do it from scratch. Uh, I would recommend uh, you, you to actually go and check the source code that Microsoft has built. Um, because it has so many good ideas. I was able to get all this content just by searching on it uh, and figuring out how it works. So that's basically one thing. Then coming to the part of uh, JSON data types and why is it used? So for example, if you consider API, API is basically what Business Central exposes to you. So the integration part uh, is taken care by some other uh, some other software or third party application. So using those applications, you actually uh, get and post the data to the APIs. Uh, the problem with that is you, first of all, uh, the, the integration solution that you use, first of all, you have to pay a price for it. Um, second of all, the thing is, uh, if there are some changes to business central side, okay, there are, also have to be changes which are to be made on the integration side as well. So these are not automatically taken care of. Also, there are issues with metadata refreshing and all these things. So we can simply avoid it if we can do our, uh, you know, like, like an integration inside Business Central. So by now Business Central supports JSON uh, objects and the different data types. So using those, you can actually uh, do a get and post and uh, I, multiple calls and you can pass data. So it is all about basically writing the code in Business Central for making it easier. So Business Central only acts as a uh, integration solution itself. So the major types are JSON array, JSON objects, and let's just talk about JSON array. So in JSON array, if you take a look at the example on the right, you can see that there are multiple JSON objects and you simply enclose it within an array. So you can put JSON, uh, multiple JSON objects. So it is basically like a JSON format that you have. You can also enclose it multiple times within your array, forming multiple level of indentations. So this is where it is used. So I have given a sample code where you can, I have gotten the data in form of JSON array. Now I have to uh, peel each and every JSON object out of it so that I can process it individually. So that is what I'm exactly doing. So in this case, I'm using a for loop, which will run for all the counts uh, inside our JSON array. And for each of the count, I'm going to get the data and I'm going to put it into my JSON object and copy it over for further processing. Okay. So this is the basic code, uh, which is expected to be written in some or a little bit of variation, but this is how basically it works. Then coming to the JSON object. So what JSON object is basically uh, one record you can say, or one set of value that uh, that identifies itself as a record, I would say. So in this case, you can also create your own JSON object. So for example, I'm trying to get the customer's uh, API value. So just as you saw uh, the API value, once you call the API, you get the JSON format. So if I want to, do something like that. I can simply make use of JSON object to add the fields that we want. Okay, and then we can enclose it inside our JSON array and we can simply push it out as a message. Okay, so in this case, I'm just, uh, you know, adding my B64 file name, username, password uh, values into my JSON. And I'm going to then pass this JSON to my HTTP request uh, for post. So here I can use it and then I can simply read the response out of it. Then we have JSON token. So JSON token is basically an easy way of extracting data for each and every small uh, value. So in this case, the value, we have two things. Uh, we have the token or the key field name and the value, which is the actual value. So in this case, I have written a small uh, piece of code which can identify the token based upon its name okay. and uh, it will just give me value for that token. So for example, if I'm saying I want, I'm passing uh, the parameter as color and I'm passing the whole JSON object as text or as JSON object, you can actually retrieve the value red out of it. So this is the basic code for it. 
and uh, I think there, there are going to be a little bit variations to this, but this is how it works. Then we have JSON value. So JSON value in this case is the whole JSON, uh, whole JSON value, which is returned by the API or any application where you make a call for it. Okay. So as I said, uh, you can have multiple values, multiple arrays, multiple level of indentation inside JSON. So you can simply, you know, read this JSON from a uh, string and I can also add it as an object or as an array uh, because just as I said, you can have multiple variations of indentations into it. Okay, so this is the sample code on the left hand side where I'm going to simply get the JSON value from the string and I can add it as a JSON array value. Okay. Um, then how, how we can use it. So majorly, uh, I, I cannot generate an output for this. Um, but the sample code behind it is everything. If you take a look at it is the methods on which you run. So I have basically created two methods, which is get and post uh, using this, you should be able to simply uh, transfer your data with multiple applications. Okay, and you can simply pass on the data as you want and receive and uh, process in the data as you receive as a response or uh, some other call types. Okay, so in this case, I have simply used my headers uh, to create my content type and uh, add my content type as JSON. Then I am going to basically uh, call my URL and from that URL. So now I'm making a get call when I get my uh, data as a response, I need to process it. So I'll get it as a JSON array. Okay, here you can see it. And then I'll uh, retrieve each and every token. Okay, and using the token, I'm going to pass it. Uh, I'm going to retrieve it as my file name. So here, the number I'm saving it as a file name and the name I'm saving it as file extension. So this is what I can do to get the data and I can further use it into multiple loop structure to put in the data into business central records uh, as and how we like it. Then we have post calls. So for example, now I want to send data out of business central. Okay, so just as I mentioned before, you can simply create JSON uh, objects. Okay, and you can add your uh, key value pair just as you like. So in this case, my key is file name and my value is abc.txt. Okay, so I can add my key value pair as JSON uh, object and I can wrap it up inside a JSON array and I can pass it up uh, using my post call. So if you see it, uh, I'm going to basically pass it. I'm going to write it to content. Uh, the content is going to write it to HTTP content and then it is going to be passed as a uh, part of request. Okay, so in, in my request parameter uh, for HTTP client, uh, I'm passing it out and whatever is the response, I can uh, decide to process it further. So this was basically with regards to our JSON data types. Uh, if you need more details, uh, feel free to email me or contact me on LinkedIn. Uh, then coming to the major, I would say this is the monster uh, of APIs. The reason why it is, uh, is like you can do pretty much anything using Azure functions. So you name anything, it can be done using Azure functions. So Azure functions is basically like a small code which is sitting on Azure and uh, you just have to trigger it. So upon trigger, it will perform all the sort different sorts of actions that are written inside it. Uh, the best part is you have control on it because you are using pretty much of uh, like frameworks like uh, .NET, you are using Python, uh, you can use multiple languages like JavaScripts, um, F Sharp, and all these details are present inside Azure Functions. So it's not needed that you should write your code in one language. You can write it in multiple languages as in, as in how you like it. Okay. The best part is using the previously mentioned JSON objects. Uh, you can trigger your Azure Functions. So Azure Functions in turn will do the complex processing and using the outputs from Azure Functions, you can retrieve it back into Business Central or you can put it into any third party applications as in how you like it. Okay, so in this case, I'm just uh, creating two Azure Functions basically to get the data and to post the data. So if you know that get is basically to get the data as a form of string in URL, 
and uh, you can once you call it with the parameters it will it it is uh, it will give you some sort of value uh, based upon the processing uh, logic so in this case what i'm doing is i'm just passing uh, the name and the company name here okay uh, if you can see on the line 24 and 25 i'm passing it as my parameter in the url and i'm uh, retrieving it as a response in my message okay so this is the azure function uh, standard uh, standard code which is present i'm i've just done a couple of modifications to it okay so i'm doing a get call in this case i'm passing my name and my organization name as parameters in the url and you can see that i'm getting it out as a response in the output similarly uh, we will do a post call so in this post call you are going to i'm going to pass my name and my organization name okay and i'm going to retrieve it as the same message that i have received so using this you can actually do multiple levels of complex processing so one of such examples is using ftp so if you know that business central does not support ftp integration by default but if you have set up uh, correctly uh, with the APIs, the JSON objects and Azure functions, you can do FTP file transfer and retrieval uh, using Azure functions. So I was able to achieve that for, uh, you know, just for curiosity, I tried it out, but it works. So this is how I have done it. And uh, let's see the output for post. So when I make a post call, um, I'm passing my parameters as JSON and i'm passing my name and my organization name and if you see here my um, data as a response changes so i hope that was the most uh, heavy thing in i would say if it comes to apis i guess this is the maximum level you can reach uh, thank you and i'm open to questions um, you can contact me through uh, linkedin here Sorry. Right. Lori, are you there? Hello, Lori. Hello, Laurie, are you there? Yes, I am. I apologize. I couldn't get off mute. Thank you. Right. I'm peeking to see if there's any questions or hands raised and in the attendees here. If you would like to raise your hand, I'm going to click allow you to talk. And then you all just have to unmute yourself if you have any questions you'd like to verbalize. And there are not any in the Q&A at this time. Got a quiet group here today. <laughs> you must have covered everything very detailed. Thank you so much, Olister. All right. Um, OK, thank you. You're welcome. And we look forward to um, additional webinars coming soon. I did want to highlight here that we have another one from CloudFronts coming up. Look for it. We are going to be scheduling it around the 20th of November. It's going to be DocuSign and D365 CRM without integration using Power Automate. So look for that for Olister's colleagues coming soon. Thanks all. all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye.